Hey there everybody, this is Ira, and I am here on a Wednesday with another new little indie game that you might not have heard of. This one is called One Shift. It is described as a puzzle platformer, but it has a unique mechanic about pausing time and and shifting. It's it's very confusing. Um I think it'd probably be easier to show you than try to describe it. I've only played a couple of the levels just to test it out. It works fine. As always, we're going to take a look in the options menu before we get in there. Um, quality, resolution, frame rate limit, post-processing, full screen, okay? Um, very, very kind of basic audio and video settings, and that's about it. There are a lot of languages available, which is cool. Uh, nothing else in the way of accessibility options, but in this game, I don't know that they're really necessary. You can control this with the mouse and keyboard or with the gamepad. I'm gonna try to do this with the gamepad. I've got the Xbox One. I'm not gonna memorize all this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the beginning. Ooh, can I change my, my avatar? I guess not. I guess these are locked. Um, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna go through the tutorial. Because you always want to try the tutorial first. All right, the gamepad is being picked up just fine. Uh, I couldn't get it to work in the menu. I think maybe you do need to use the mouse for the menu, but uh, move the cube using, and then you see, can I get my, oh, no, I can't get a pointer now. Okay, so you can see move using ADWS, a a which is an odd order to put those in, and then it shows the two directional pads, but actually it's not the directional pad, it's the left joystick, so. Hey, game developers, you want to show the joystick there, not the D-pad, which is good because the Xbox 360 controller D-pad is kind of garbage. So this is just showing us you walk around and get to the goal. Pretty simple. Level completed. I'm a genius. You guys knew it. Let's go. Next one. Press any key to continue. Jump with space A. I've got A or square if we've got the PlayStation-style controller. I'm just going to jump up and get to the goal. Oh, this is the easiest game ever, or maybe I am a genius. Probably, probably the second one. We're going to find out. All right, so now... Now uh, we want to freeze time with, I'm going to be using the, huh, is it the B button or is it X? Is X a button on a PlayStation controller? I think it's B. So obviously I can't get up here. Oh no, I can't get up here. Tutorial, help me. We're going to press B and then with the left and right bumpers, we're going to change the world. And then we can press B again to unfreeze time. Unable to unpause. Oh no, because I'm like standing in the middle of, um, Let's try this again. All right, now we can go up a long way. Oh no, but look, the goal is gone. So we're gonna have to change the world again and then unfreeze it over there. So you see, this is the key mechanic here is changing time and like changing dimension, I guess, changing the, the map in between time and using that to figure out um, how to get where you're going. So here, I don't have a way up there and I don't have the goal. The goal is going to be up there. So obviously, first thing I want to do is go up here. All right, and we're going to pause again. Oh, oh, this is this is a, a, an extra clever one, you guys, because I need to pause while I am jumping up there, right? So let's see, can I do this? I did it. On pause. Aw, oh, nailed it. Nailed it, you guys. So I think this is a really interesting mechanic, actually. This is kind of a cool little game. This is only a few a few units of currency on Steam. A few dollars or euros or pounds or whatever whatever you, uh, you use to buy games. And I think it's got kind of an interesting... Um, an interesting mechanic here. And it, it looks like they, they do, like, they immediately use it in... Um, interesting ways. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna make that jump. Oh, I did. I totally made it. Sweet. I just got an achievement as well. There's a lot of achievements in this game. I'm getting lots of achievements. And I think I just unlocked another character. Um, what we got here? Huh. Okay. Seems pretty simple here. Um... I keep forgetting which buttons do what, you guys. This is, this is embarrassing. There's only like three buttons that I need to use. Here we go. So that's the fifth level. I'm, I'm not going to go too far in this, you guys, because there's not so many levels, and I don't want to spoil the game. I think, basically, I think that's the mechanics. I don't think there are any other mechanics that need to be taught. I think they just use this kind of dimension swapping ability in different ways and they probably get more intricate and complex and you have to really pl you have to be able to plan out a path to where you're going um 
like really quickly and without being able to see the whole path at once. So if you like this, you guys, if you think this is your your cup of tea, um, I'll put a link in the description. You can go and check out the game. As I said, it's only it's only a few few dollars, a few euros, a few pounds. And uh, if it's your if it's your type of thing, I think you definitely get you know some decent enjoyment out of it. Um, thank you very much to the developers for, for giving me a copy of this game and asking me to review it. It's getting a thumbs up for me. I like this one. I will probably finish the game, I think. Um, so that, you know, there's there's my opinion. But guys, if this isn't your, your thing, if you don't like this type of game, if you don't want to play this type of game, uh, don't worry. Because next time around, I'll be back with another indie game. And y you never know, it might just turn out to be your new favorite game. So, uh, this is Ira. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.